So you got a lot of questions. You got a lot of questions and just not enough answers. Man, do I know what you're talking about? Questions. Questions are worries, the what ifs. What if that happens? What's the meaning of this? What's the point of all of this? What if I say yes to that? What if I say no to that? What if the company goes under? What if this happens to my son, my daughter, my friends? What if I move? What if they move? Lots of questions. And the questions, the scales of questions and answers in life, damn it, it's never balanced. So how do we keep going though when, when all these questions are conscious? And they're right in front of us, you know, and they need answering before we can step forward. Let me invite you to try something and think about questions differently. And this really helps me, okay? And welcome to Victoria, British Columbia, by the way, on the 23rd floor of this beautiful condo. We got the ocean here. I'm going to be doing some swimming. The ocean's about three degrees Celsius, so it's like cold plunging. It's going to be amazing. And as I'm out here, I've had definite worries about what am I going to do with my Master's of Neuroscience degree? What, what is going to come of that? What if nobody watches these YouTube videos anymore? So few do already. Do I still make them? Why am I even making them? You know, what is my faith all about? I'm getting into, more into Christ and following Christ, but is this a good thing to do? Is it embarrassing because I see other people doing that and they're like kind of messed up? What? These questions are so vivid and in front of us and they're calling hard for an answer. Like they want an answer right now in order for you to be at peace. And what I do now is I take those questions and I live them out. Live out your questions, meaning you don't stop and research and listen to all the podcasts and, and journal about it and really try to figure something out. Sure, sometimes, depending on the question. But eventually you're going to have to make a decision and you're going to have to live out that question. You're going to have to keep living and experience will determine your answers. Experience as you live them out, as you walk beside your questions. Let your questions follow you. Let your questions follow you. Like they're right behind you. They're not threatening. Why do we think these questions are threatening us? It's not threatening. They're just going to follow with us and say, you know what? I can't answer you right now. I don't have the intelligence. I don't have the experience. I just don't know. And the don't knows can follow you along the journey. Like if a child asks you at age four, you know, why is the sky really blue, dad? Why is the sky really blue, mom? They're not ready for the actual answer yet. They're not ready. You're going to talk to them about organic chemistry and refraction and reflection and that, that's not going to make sense. At some points in your life, it's okay to put the questions aside and keep living. Live them out. You will get answers. They will be checked along the way, but it's not going to happen when you just sit. This isn't, this isn't sometimes an intellectual battle. It's a battle of living. And when I look at podcasts and see people interviewed and they're so smart because they've read so much and I'm like, I don't want to be that. I want to gain my answers through living. That's the way I'm satisfied with an answer too, right? You can read everything about the latest Metallica concert and how many people were there and the set list that they played and you know everything and then you can go to a show. That's living it out. I wonder what the Metallica concert will be like. Okay, I'm going to read about it. I'm going to see the set list. I'm going to count how many people, you know, see the attendance, where it was. What kind of beer were they serving there? Were people allowed to smoke inside? Or you live out the question and you go to the show and there's your answer. Okay, live out your questions. Write that one down. I am going to live out those big questions I can't answer. Right now. I'm going to live out my questions and the next thing about meaninglessness. This is a big one. 
And sensitive souls are sensitive to this world and sensitive to this word. And billions of people right now are in your same position, billions before us and billions will be after. The mystery of the universe, the mystery of existence, the mystery of purpose, the mystery of faith. What's this all about? Meaninglessness. And of those of you who have dealt with depression as, as I have too, the utter pointlessness of every interaction, of everything we see, of everything we do, of everything we see other people do, of the tasks we have to do, of the chores. What's the point? What's the point of cutting grass? It's long, you made it short. What the fuck? It blows my mind and the brain plays tricks on you. Depression is very real. It plays tricks on you. But even if you're not fully depressed, the existential comes to us all. It does. In times of hardship, in times of loss, traumatic experiences. And what is this meaninglessness all about and, and what can we do about it? And this will help about 10 of you. This will help about 10 of you. And for the rest, I'm sorry, it might, but this really helped me. I'm at home, totally depressed. I won't tell you the year. But my dad's there and I'm like, oh my God, dad. Ugh. It's just so pointless. Ugh. It's just so pointless. Everything, it's everything is freaking meaninglessness. Oh my God, what the hell is the point? There's no meaning. It's pure meaninglessness. There's no meaning to anything. Seeing them in the kitchen cooking, what's the point? Seeing them sweeping the floors, mopping the floors. How do you have energy to do that? What's the point of keeping something clean if it's just going to get dirty again? Why are we even living here? Why even talk? What's there to talk about? And my dad simply said, Scott, then let it be meaningless. Let it be meaningless. Everyone, that just freed me. Those, those words freed me. To always search for meaning, that's what we're told to do, right? Even when we're feeling terrible, this is the time to do the big search. You have to search for meaning, search for purpose, get a mission, follow it. I've said this to you all before too. You gotta get a mission, because even though when you're feeling low, you're gonna have that North Star to keep you going. There's gotta be nuance. You don't get a lot of nuance online. It's either this or it's that. That's what gets clicks, that's what gets views, that's what gets controversy and comments, therefore more views. There's nuance to this. If you're in a dark place of meaninglessness, for the time being, let it be meaningless. Does that relieve a bit of pressure? Does that relieve a bit of pressure? Let it be meaningless. Go about your day, find humor in it. I'm just pissing in a toilet and it doesn't mean anything. I'm missing in a toilet and it doesn't mean anything. Piss in a toilet and it doesn't mean anything. Whatever. I'm doing my homework because I got to do my homework. It's meaninglessness. But here's the thing. When you're in that state, unless it lasts a really long time, my friends, just like living out your questions, meaning will find you. And you will find meaning you're going to meet in the middle. You're going to meet in the middle with some purpose, something to live for, something that interests you, something that excites you. But in the middle of meaninglessness, the search, there's so much pressure. There's so much guilt. There's so much shame. And why is it meaninglessness? It shouldn't be. I got to find it. Everyone else can cut grass and find meaning in that. Everyone does this and they find meaning in that. The questions add up. Living out your questions means I'm going to let it be meaningless for a little while and let's just, let's just go A to B, baby. Let's just keep going. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Oh man, is that fun or what? Let it be meaningless. So with that being said, free yourself from the search, free yourself from the pressure, 
be in this for a while and let it be. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for listening on the Being Human podcast. You know all of the links in the description if you want to get in touch, if you want to support the channel and all these things. And the big news is I had this just epiphany and this idea that I want to have guests back on the podcast. I'm ready. I'm ready to interview again. And to be conceited a little bit, I think I'm a great interviewer. I listen to other podcasts and I'm like, ooh, I'm a little critical because I would have asked that question. And why didn't they ask that question? And they were answering, why did they interrupt there? I can't wait to have guests on and I'd love your input of who you want to see me interview. Who would you love to listen to and what questions would you like to ask them? And this is going to be a great thing on Patreon. They can vote for things and, and people they want on and questions they want answered. So thank you so much. Comment about whatever and let it be, baby. I'll see ya. And while you're gone, I'll be playing. Mm -hmm.